The moon phase is one of the oldest and most beautiful complications in watchmaking. In fact, clocks that track the lunar cycle have been made since the early renaissance. Now at Faro, we like to think that we can always be relied upon to take a fresh approach to watch design. So when we decided to create our own moon phase collection, we set out to put our signature spin on this well trodden design. The result is a range of three watches that each offer a slightly different take on the moon phase, and I'll go through each model and its unique features in turn. First up is the Eddington. It's named after Sir Arthur Eddington, who was an English astronomer, physicist and mathematician. He's notable for being the first person to correctly theorise that stars produce their energy through the fusion of hydrogen into helium. The dial of the Eddington is brushed copper, which provides some subtle texture that doesn't detract from the other parts of the dial. The hour markers alternate between simple batons and Roman numerals, and both are made from grade OL X1 Superluminova. These are paired with a polished lance handset that's also loomed, and a seconds hand with the fairer A in blue. The moon phase of the Eddington uses a midnight blue disc that features tiny stars and a loomed white moon. This disc, and the others in the collection, have all been meticulously hand painted in Switzerland to provide an artistic flourish that's got much more character than a flat printed disc. Next up we have the Burbage, which takes its name from Margaret Burbage. She was a British American observational astronomer and astrophysicist. In the 1950s she helped develop landmark research into stellar nucleosynthesis, which is the creation of elements via nuclear fusion within stars. The Burbage has an arctic blue sunburst dial that's paired with simple batons of superluminova. The handset is identical to that seen on the Eddington, but the moon phase is a bit different. The disc is a slightly lighter blue than on the Eddington, but it's still flecked with stars and features a vibrant pink loomed moon. Lastly there's the Halley, which is of course named after Edmund Halley, the famous English astronomer whom Halley's Comet was named after. The watch features a midnight blue gloss dial, with markers that are a mix of batons and Arabic numerals. Just like the other models, these markers are all made from superluminova, and the Halley also features the same lance handset, but the fair array on the seconds hand is burnt orange. For the moon phase disc, a bright yellow moon is set against a royal blue night sky, and both jump out at you against the dark dial. As a final touch, each dial also has a frame date window that's colour matched to its dial, so that it blends in seamlessly with the overall design. As always, I appreciate that there might be some people who don't know how to set a moon phase complication, and if that's the case there is a helpful interactive guide on the moon phase collection page that takes you through each step. But before we move on to talk about the other aspects of these watches, I'll also go through it quickly for you now. Firstly pull out the crown to position 2, that's the same position that you'd use to set the date. Now wind the crown anti-clockwise to move the moon disc so that the moon is at the full moon position. Then check the current phase of the moon online and count the number of days since the last full moon. This is also something that we list in our guide on the website. Then advance the moon disc however many days have elapsed since the full moon. Your watch should now be displaying the correct moon phase and you can push the crown back in and continue wearing the watch. Moving on to look at the case, the watches all use the same 38.5mm steel cushion case that's an evolution of the one used on our three hand cushion case collection. It's just 10.5mm thick, including the sapphire crystal, and has a lug length of 43.8mm, so it will suit a lot of wrists and wear very nicely. The shape of the case will also help these watches to wear a bit bigger than the numbers would suggest. Now as I said earlier, this case is an evolution of our cushion case, and what separates this from the one used in the cushion case collection is the grain twist texturing on the sides that was inspired by the undulating surface of the moon itself. We've also brushed the square chamfer on the top to define the bezel of the case a bit better. 
Lastly, to ensure that the strap fits snugly against the case, there's a scalloped area between the lugs that allows the strap to sit flush against the metal without either rubbing or showing an unsightly gap. The movement we've used for this collection is the Solita SW288-1MA. It's a hand-wound movement incorporating a purpose-built large aperture moon phase module. It features 18 joules, a smooth beat rate of 28,800 beats per hour, and a 45-hour power reserve when fully wound. What's more, we've chosen the Elaborate grade version of the movement, so it's been adjusted in three positions, and features an Inca block shock absorber. As a finishing touch, the bridge is engraved with the Fera logo and our bespoke arrow pattern, with the other surfaces having a perlage finish. And though these pre-production samples don't have them, the movements in the production models all have blued screws. The watches in the Moonface collection retail for £1,475 or $1,650 or €1,695 Euros, depending on your location, and there's our usual selection of leather, rubber and mesh strap options to choose from. These watches also have unique serial numbers, and you can choose your preferred number from those available on the product page. If you're interested in any of the watches in the Moonphase collection, then you can read more about them on our website, and the watches are due to ship at the end of April 2023. Don't forget to let us know what you think of our new range in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.